Okay, today we're going to be talking about sequences in series, which as we said in class, represent number patterns. The first kind of sequence that we're going to talk about is called an arithmetic sequence. And what that means is that if you were to have a sequence of numbers, say A1, A2, A3, A4, all the way to A sub n, which represents the nth term, if you were wanting to go from the first term to the second term, what you would do is you would add or subtract some value d each time. And go from a2 to a3, you would add or subtract some number d, so on and so forth, until you get to the nth term, where you would still add or subtract some common difference d. So we represent a sequence of numbers like this using a general formula up here where a sub n, the nth term in the sequence, is equal to your initial value, or the first term. So the first term is also called your initial value, plus n minus 1 times what we're calling your common difference, which once again is just that number that you are adding and subtracting to get between each term. So, to practice this, let's say that we are given this first sequence. We're going to call it a sub n. And you would look at your pattern of numbers. You would notice that to get from 1 to 4, you're adding 3. Oops. To get from 4 to 7, you're still adding 3, and so on and so forth. So that means that that common difference is 3. So in order to get a general formula for the sequence, all we do is we plug in the information we know into that equation from the previous slide. So we have a sub n is equal to a1, our initial value in this case is 1, plus n minus 1, times our common difference, 3. We need to simplify this equation because that looks like a lot of math right there. So in order to do that, we need to use the distributive property here on the common difference. So we've got 1 plus 3n minus 3, which simplifies to a sub n is equal to 3n minus 2. Now we can check our formula by plugging in a number. So let's say we wanted to see what the third term in our sequence was. That means everywhere we see n, we would want to plug in 3. So we've got 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 2 tells us that our third term should be 7. If we look back up here, we've got 1, 2, 3. Yep, our third term is 7. So that was the correct general formula for that sequence. So if we look at this next one, let's call that Tn. We've got the numbers 15, 10, 5, 0, negative 5, negative 10. Hopefully you notice that you're decreasing by 5 each time. So that means that our d in this case is now a negative 5. Remember, as we said on the previous slide, that it is okay if d is a negative number. It just means that your sequence is decreasing. All right, once again, we want to come up with a general formula. So we're going to start with a sub n is equal to our initial value, 15, plus n minus 1 times our negative 5. Distribute out that negative 5. Oops. We've got 15 minus 5n plus 5, because negative times a negative is a positive, which means that we have a sub n is equal to negative 5n plus 20. We could check that once again by let's plugging in that third term. So we've got negative 5 times 3 plus 20. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 20 would yield 5, which is indeed that third term, so our formula is good. I want you guys to hit pause on the video, and I want you to try to create a general formula for this sequence right here. Let's call that b sub n. So once again, hit pause. I want you to try it on your own and then hit play to check your answer.
Okay, so what I'm hoping you did is that... Okay, so looking at this first one, you've got 16 and 24, 24 and 36, 36 and 54. So you've got 16, 24, 36, 54. Now hopefully you looked at this and realized that, well, it's not linear because the numbers aren't increasing by a constant term. So then you assumed, well, then maybe it's geometric. The way you can check to figure out what a common ratio is, is you just take the second number, divide it by the first, and see if you get the same ratio as you would when you take the third number, dividing it by the second. That means if you put in your calculator 24, over 16, you get 1.5. Then if you check, you got 36 over 24. You also get 1.5. So since you get the same number to go from each term, that means that's that common ratio R. So this is geometric. Looking at this next one, you've got 1, 4, 9, 16. So to go from 1 to 4, if you're adding, well, you know, you add 3. Then to go from 4 to 9, you're adding 5. Then to go from 9 to 16, you're adding 6. Ooh, sorry, 7. Can't do math right now. So if you notice, then, well, you're not adding the same thing each time, so maybe it's multiplying. To go from 1 to 4, you've got to multiply by 4. To go from 4 to 9, well, now you have to multiply by a fraction. So since it's not arithmetic and it's not geometric, that means this has to be neither. So then we'll look down here at this last one. We're going from 23 to 17, 17 to 11, 11 to 5. So we're subtracting 6 each time, which is a common difference of negative 6, which makes this arithmetic. Alright, so now what I want you to do is I want you to write the equation for the nth term. That means it should look like a sub n equals something for each arithmetic sequence given below. Once again, hit pause, try this on your own, and then hit play to see what the answers are. Alright, so looking at this first one, to go from 5 to negative 13, you're subtracting 18. And to go from 13 to negative 31, we're subtracting 18 again. So we want to use that general formula. We've got a sub n is equal to a1, our initial value, 5, plus n minus 1 times negative 18. So what we want to do is distribute out that negative 18. We've got 5 minus 18n plus 18 as our equation. Combining like terms, we've got negative 18 in, got 18 plus 5, that is plus 23. So that's the equation for our arithmetic sequence for that one. Then if you look at the second one, this time it tells you the fifth term, that's what a sub 5 is, it's the fifth term in the sequence, and it tells you your common difference. So this is a little bit more tricky. This is the equivalent of if I was giving you a linear equation problem and I was telling you that the slope is 6 and that it goes through the point 5, 19. You think back, what you would have done in Algebra 1 is you would have used that point-slope formula, the one that says y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Well, the cool thing is, is that since an arithmetic sequence is just a linear equation, we can use this same formula, plugging in the slope and this point we know, and then we can change it so it looks like, up here, that arithmetic sequence notation. So our y1 is going to be the value of the sequence, 19. So we have y minus 19 is equal to our slope m, which is that common difference 6, times x minus... 5, because 5 is the term number for us, 
I'm going to distribute out that 6. So I have y minus 19 is equal to 6x minus 30. Coming over here so we've got a little bit more room and adding 19 to both sides. We've got y equals 6x. We have minus 30 plus 19, which is minus 11. So now we have the equation for the linear equation. But once again, we want to make it look like it's an arithmetic sequence. So our y values are just our a sub n. Our x values are our n. We have minus 11. So that's our answer. So once again, whenever you are given this kind of situation here, where they tell you a term number and its solution, so here we have the fifth term is 19, and we have that the common difference is 6, you want to just treat it like it's a linear equation where you're given the slope and a point and go through what we just did. All right, so this is another way that they word the same problem. As they say, I want you to find a general equation when you are given two terms. In this case, we are given the first term, a1, and then we need to figure out what this term is over here, the 22nd. So we've got a1, this would be 2, 3, 4, 5, so that means this is the sixth term. So once again, we're going to pretend like we're talking about a linear equation rather than an arithmetic sequence, because if I were to give you that the first term is negative 8, and the second or the sixth term is 22. That's just two points on a line, and then I'm asking you to figure out what the slope is between those points, so you can make the linear equation. So hopefully you all remember that you can calculate slope by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm hoping you all remember that. So that means you can plug in 22 minus a negative 8 divided by 6 minus 1, which becomes 30 over 5, which means that your common difference is 6. Now what we want to do is we want to plug it back into that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 formula. Our slope m is 6. We need to choose what point we want to use. We can use either 1 comma negative 8 or 6 comma 22. I like to use anything that has a 1 in it. It just makes the math simpler. So we're going to have x minus 1 over here, and then we're going to put y plus 8 on this side, because y minus a negative 8 is y plus 8. Distributing out our 6, we've got y plus 8 is equal to 6x minus 6. Move the 8 to the other side. We have y is equal to 6x. We've got negative 6 minus 8 negative 14. That is our general equation for the linear line. We now once again want to rewrite it so it looks like an arithmetic sequence. And we're done. So I want you to try this problem on your own. We're going to pretend that this is our first term. That would mean this would be the second term. And this is the third term. I want you to do what we did in so do what we did in the previous example and figure out what the general form of the arithmetic sequence is. So hopefully what you did is you figured out that the first term was 36 and that the third term was 96. So you use the slope equation, 96 minus 36, 3 minus 1. 60 over 2, which tells you your slope is 30. You then plugged it into your y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 formula. I always like to plug in this first one, so y minus 36 is equal to 30 times x minus 1. y minus 36 is equal to 30x minus 30. Adding the 36 to the other side, you get y equals 30x plus 6. And just rewriting that in arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to 30n plus 6. And that's your answer. So not too hard. It's bringing back a lot of that information that you've learned, you've known since Algebra 1. Now what we want to do is the same thing 
but we want to take a look at geometric sequences. So hit pause. I want you to try some of these problems on your own, coming up with the general nth term formula, which means a sub n equals something. So what you need to do is you need to look for that common ratio and then plug it into your equation. All right, so going from 1 half to 2, you're multiplying by 4. From 2 to 8, you're multiplying by 4. So that means we know that our common ratio is equal to 4. So we just plug it into our general equation. a sub n is equal to our first term. I'm going to write it as a fraction just because I think they look prettier. So 1 half times 4 to the n minus 1. That's your answer. Put a box around it. Looking at the next one, once again, you see we have this alternating sign, which tells us we know our r is going to be negative. To go from 1 fourth to 2, and then from 2 to negative 16, we've got to multiply by 8 each time. So it means our r is equal to negative 8. So our general formula, a sub n, is equal to negative 1 fourth times negative 8 to the n minus 1. We're not going to worry about simplifying this right now. Hopefully you all recognize that we could simplify that if you recall our exponent properties from the exponential unit, but we're not going to get too picky about that in the sequencing unit. So looking at this last problem, we've got the same situation with an alternating sign. So our r is going to be negative to go from 4 to 16, then 16 to 64. We're multiplying by 4 each time. So that leaves a sub n is equal to negative 4 as our initial value times negative 4, our ratio to the n minus 1 power. All right, so our last example for this video is that we want to do a general equation when we're given two terms of an exponential function. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that a1 is equal to 640. We've got no a2, no a3, no a4, but we know that the fifth term is equal to 2.5. So that means we know two, means we know two points on this geometric sequence. We know that the first term is 640. We know the fifth term is 2.5. So just like you can write a linear equation when given two points, as you remember, you can write a geo or excuse me, a exponential equation when given two points. Luckily, we already know that a sub one is equal to 640, and that's in our formula. Our formula says a sub n is equal to a1, 640, times r to the n minus 1. What we need to do is we want to figure out what this r value is. In order to do that, let's plug in this set of points over here. We know that when n is 5, a n equals 2.5. So we can plug that in. Got to the 5 minus 1. And now all we need to do is simplify for r. So to get the exponent simplified, we've got 2.5 is equal to 640 times r to the fourth power. I'm going to divide each side by 640. Sorry, that's supposed to be a 4. Divide by 640. So that means we've got r to the fourth power is equal to using your calculator, you've got 2.5 over 640. A really, really small decimal, so let's just say it's 0 0.039.06. It's got some terms after it. What we need to do is we want to get r by itself. So that means we need to take the fourth root of both sides, which if you remember is the same thing as adding this side over here. You want to make it to the 1 fourth power. and you get that r is equal to 0 0.25, which we know is the same thing as 1 fourth. So now that we know what r is, we can come back over here to our general equation, and we can plug in the information we know. So we've got a sub n is equal to that initial term, 640, times our ratio, 1 fourth, to the n minus 1 power. And that's our answer. All right, so I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this. So thanks. And I'll see you in class on Monday. Bye.